video in a long time and I know I start what 85% of my videos like that this year but it's just been a weird year okay that's all I'm gonna say very strange lots of transitions in my life and yeah I just wanted to get back in the swing of things so I wanted to put up a video that was kind of on this really easy to achieve neutral universally flattering kind of look that I've been wearing on social media for probably the past six weeks or so I've just been wearing like this super neutral easy to achieve eye look that I know would flatter anyone that wore it for the most part. And I've just been pairing it with different lips depending on how I feel. You can put this eye look with anything. So that makes it kind of perfect for fall because I know during the fall, most of us kind of get into like the dark lip, bold lip kind of trend. And this might be an easy way to help you achieve that. Obviously there's been a few changes around here. I have different hair. I went back to being a brunette. I'm a natural brunette and the blonde had completely worn out. It's welcome. I actually have tape and hair extensions now and I was thinking about doing a video about it because I know that when I was doing my research about tapins, I really couldn't find a lot of stuff about it whatsoever. So if that's something you would be interested in, please let me know. Also throughout the course of this video, you are going to notice that I am missing two fingernails on this hand. I ripped off my fingernails last week. Like I don't mean like I broke a fingernail, like I ripped my fingernail off and it's incredibly painful. So until it calms down and it's not so sensitive, I can't get a fill in. So throughout this video, it's probably going to drive you banana sandwich. I know it's going to drive me crazy when I go to edit it. Sorry in advance. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Please subscribe if you have not. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and products mentioned in this video. And until then, I will see you in the next one. I love you more than you will ever know. All right guys, as always, I am starting off with a primer and today I'm using MAC Painterly Paint Pot all over the lid with a fluffy miniature synthetic brush. And then I'm gonna go in with a concealer that is a little bit lighter than my actual face foundation will be here in a minute. And I'm using that to carve out the underside of my brow. I've been doing this lately because I like how it makes my under brow highlight really pop at the end of my makeup application. And then I blend those two creams together on the lid. Now I'm going in with Always Sunny Pro Long Wear eyeshadow from MAC. It's been my obsession lately in terms of a transition shade all over the lid. And with a fluffy E40 brush from Sigma, I am working this all over the outer corner of the eye, moving diagonally up towards my brow. I'm not taking this inward. I'm not taking this at all in a straight line in towards my nose. It is definitely going up at an angle that is giving me, me more lid space to work with. And it's really going to open up my eyes at the end of the look. Then I'm taking Saddle from MAC on a smaller brush. This is actually from MAC. Also, it's a 224, I think. Similar to the E40, but I find this one to be a little bit thinner and a little bit denser, and I like to use it to put on my next color because I can get a little bit lower. It's still really soft, so it does blow out the color nice and fluffy, but it still affords me the opportunity not to take it up in towards above the first color I laid down. So you can still kind of see it's always sunny and you can see saddle right below it. That is what I want. And then I will go in and mix those two colors together on the lid using a blending brush to buff them out. Now I'm taking brown down eyeshadow from MAC on an even smaller, even more tapered, even more pointy brush. This one is from Sigma. I can never remember the name of this brush. I don't know why. And I'm doing exactly what I did before. I'm going in the same motion. I'm starting in the outer corner, but I'm just not going up as high as I went with Saddle and I'm not going up nearly as high as I went with Always Sunny. And then I blended them together with, you guessed it, a fluffy brush. Now I'm taking Coconut Grove from NARS and I'm doing exactly the same thing that I just did with the other ones. Going in the outer corner, moving in a diagonal motion, but I'm not taking it as high as Brown Down, I'm not taking it as high as Saddle, and I'm not taking it as high as Always Sunny. And then I'm gonna blend them together with a fluffy brush. See, a monkey could do this. <laughs> then I'm gonna go in with grain and I'm gonna work it all over that lid, keeping most of the saturation and pigment of color in towards the tear duct just to really open and brighten up that eye. And then I will take a brush with a little bit of saddle on it to mix it in so it's not such a harsh contrast between a light shimmery color and then like a dark brown. I like to work something in between there now. Then I mixed rice paper and shroom together. One is really yellow and one is really white and I feel like when I mix them together it gives me a very pretty bright neutral highlight underneath that brow. 
Then I'm going in with Maybelline Eye Studio Gel. Any gel liner will do. I go through gel liner like crazy. I feel like they dry out so fast, so I don't like to spend a lot of money on gel liner. I'm just doing kind of like a thin-ish line. I guess some people would consider this a wing. Usually when I wing my liner, it's really large and in charge, just the way I've been doing it lately. And then I'm going to tight line. I always do this because I feel like you can definitely see the skin underneath my eyelid if I don't. And then I push just a little bit of that coconut grove in the outer corner because I feel like after I apply eyeliner, you lose some of that contrast and depth in the outer corner. At least on me, I find 100% of the time that's what happens. Then I curled my lashes, I'm applying mascara, and then I'm going in with my current favorite false lashes, which are Bella from Coco Lashes. They're a lot less dramatic than the lashes of your that I'm typically into and that I wear, but I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, God himself for that. I don't know, I'm just really into them. I like them. They're kind of thinner towards the inner corner and thicker towards the outer, so once again, it does lend and opening up the eye. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really, really happy that I finally gave these a whirl. Now I'm going to prime the face with Smashbox Pore Minimizing Primer, and I'm gonna, ugh, excuse me, <laughs> I'm gonna focus this on the main areas of my face that have the most pores, which is near my nose, on my cheeks, my forehead, and on my chin. And then I'm going to put a little bit of lip balm on to get ready for the lip at the end of the video. And for my foundation today, I'm using NW25 from MAC. This is a brush that I got a few months ago from Sephora. It's made by Shiseido and I've really been enjoying it. I need to do kind of a more in-depth review about this brush and you know, just kind of the brushes in general that I've been enjoying. This one is so amazing. Something about it being so small and compact and tight and dense, it really blends your foundation out perfectly. It's super soft and it gives you this gorgeous airbrush full coverage finish. <laughs> Excuse me, there goes that hiccup. And I always bring it down my neck like this when my tan is breaking up the way it is right now. That's why my chest looks so splotchy. So typically I will take my foundation down a little bit when I'm feeling like I'm looking a little worse for the wear in that area. Then I'm taking Pro Long Wear Concealer and NW20 and N25 mixed, right? NW20, NW25 mixed <laughs> on this Real Techniques. It's like a really small foundation brush. I'm putting this underneath my eyes. I'm going to take it down a little bit closer on the sides of my nose. I'll do the bridge of my nose. I will do my forehead and I will also do my cupid's bow, my chin, and the underside of where I'm going to lay my contour. Now, I almost debated not putting any of this in the video because I'm doing a different technique. I've been really into like kind of a combination of reverse contouring and cooking which I need to do an in-depth video on if you guys really want me to I will I'm gonna quickly bust through it for the sake of the video though so yeah after I lay down the actual concealer I blend it out with a beauty blender nothing new here it's just gonna get a little weird from this point on because the next thing I'm going to do is go in with some loose powder this is from Laura Mercier it is her translucent powder and I'm gonna take a beauty blender and I'm going to pack a shit ton of this all underneath my eyes. It's gonna go down the bridge of my nose, Cupid's bow, forehead, and the underside of my contour, just like you saw me laying down that concealer. Now, typically in the past, I would sort of do something similar to this, except instead of laying on a lot of translucent powder, I would use like some sort of a uh, highlighting setting powder, like Anastasia or Lorox contour palette or MAC or something, but this is what I've been doing lately and I'm really enjoying it. So after I lay all of this down, I do not want to get any of this loose powder anywhere that I don't want it to be. Meaning the center area of my cheek that you see right there or like the outer part of my forehead, I don't want that there. I don't want that brightness there. So I go in with a face powder that's the same color as the rest of my skin to kind of dust away any excess to make sure everything stays nice and separated and lifted and also to set the other areas of my face. I'm going in with the smallest amount of powder and the only reason I'm going in with any at all is so that my blush and other powder products I will go in with later have a powder texture to blend into and not a liquid or cream foundation texture to blend into. I hope that makes some kind of sense but that's basically I'm doing that and when this technique when I contour my nose I just take a small brush from Sigma and I put my setting powder that is the same color as my skin around my nose highlight that's how I contour my nose now I feel like it's a lot more natural looking and I don't contour my nose for any other reason other than I do sculpt 
out my face so much that if I don't contour my nose, I feel like it just looks really weird. Then I go in and dust off that powder with a flat powder brush. This one is from Sephora just to get all the excess off. Obviously you want to make sure you do this very diligently. I usually even go in with a clean brush that has absolutely nothing on it. And I really go in even longer than you're going to see in this clip and just brush and brush and brush away the excess. Then I'm going in with Bobbi Brown Golden Light Bronzer on a tapered Sigma contour brush and I'm just bronzing up the perimeter of my face. I know it seems like I am doing so much right now, like doing the most, but you'd be very surprised to know that once I've started doing this kind of reverse contouring method, I use far less bronzer, far less contour, far less product in general. It's just the motion of what you're seeing is me blending. I'm not adding that much at all. Then I'm going in with this medium contour color from the Lorac Contour Palette on my favorite contour brush and I'm lightly contouring, just kind of like hitting it softly on the very outer parts of my face. So pretty much as close to my hairline as I can possibly get it. And then at the very back near my ear to bust out that contour a little bit stronger, but still once again, not using that much. You don't have to go in so much with contour when you're doing this much highlighting hence the name reverse contouring. I hope that's making sense. And like, once again, like I told you guys, I will definitely do a dedicated video to this topic because I'm really happy with this technique. And I think if you're oily, you will love it. Then I'm just contouring the bottom of my lip. It's weird, I know, but it makes your lip look fuller and I'm into it. Now I'm doing my lower lash line and you guys, I haven't filmed in like two months. So I really messed this up. I screwed the pooch hard. Basically all I did was take that saddle underneath the eye with a pointed tapered pencil brush like I always do. And after I laid that down and blended it out, I do take it a little bit low. I have a smaller eye. So this technique opens the eyes up quite a bit. After I do that and I blend it out, I will go in with a smudgy brush and I'll take the brown down close to the lash line, but keeping, keeping it on the outer corner a little bit more and then I'll go in with an even smaller brush with that coconut grove and push that directly under the lash line. And I put a little bit of gel liner in the waterline because it's just been my jam lately. Instead of using a pencil, I use a gel. And then these are the finished eyes. I am wearing bottom lashes. They are precious lashes from House of Lashes. Wow, I'll say lashes one more time. Um, just kind of been into that lately too. It's a lot faster than doing mascara as far as I'm concerned. Then I went in with Captivating Blush from Tarte. I feel like I use the same blushes in every single video, but they're just my favorite. What can I say? And I'm just working that all over the cheeks. This is a brush from Sigma. Didn't feel like making this a very long clip since my mirror is all up in your face. Then I'm taking this highlighter from Laura Mercier. It's definitely been my favorite lately. It's called Highlight 01 on a fan brush. And I'm working that top of the cheeks, tip of the nose, bridge of the nose, and Cupid's bow. Now I'm going in with Cream In Your Coffee Lip Liner from MAC all over the lips. It's a pro longwear liner. It's absolutely amazing. It's one of my new favorite colors. I just picked it up and I'm very, very glad that I did. Um, you can pair this look with any lip in the entire world that you want. I just wanted to go with something kind of nude, but not kind of wash you out nude. Just that very warm 90s lip that's in right now. And at first I went in with kind of sexy lipstick from MAC. And upon putting it on, I realized it was way too light for this lip liner. I feel like if you go with too light of a lipstick and too dark of a lip liner, you go from looking 90s to looking Chola and I'm not into that. So I decided to put it on with a little bit of Whirl lipstick. This came out with their matte collection recently and the two of them together gave me a really nice muted, rosy, deep nude color that I absolutely love and I always blend it with a lip brush. I hope you guys enjoy. See you in the next one. Bye!